Hi everybody, in this video I would like to talk about version control and Git and branches and see all the wonders that modern version control tools give us in terms of our development. So we'll start with the migrated Northwind project which we can run and see that it's running. And to start using a version control tool all I need to do is right click the solution and say add solution to source control. Now I'm using here Git, which is an open source source control tool that comes embedded within Visual Studio. But the same principle applies to a team system or any other version control tool that we want to work on. So when working with version control, uh, we can track changes of any change that we do. We can have a look at our branches. We have a master branch. We can view the history and see that we've just created our branch and added two entries here. Let's make a simple change to the application. Let's add a startup message. So I'm going to open the application class. I'm going to override the on start event. And I'll add a message. Startup message. I'll make the change. I'll run the code. I see that the code runs. And then I can have a look at the changes that I've done. This indicator here shows me the changes. We can see that I've made a change to the application class, and I can compare with unmodified and see the actual change that has happened. We've added the onStart method, which didn't exist before. Then I can save this change and say added startup method. And um, now the change is commit, and I have no more pending changes. I can go back to the history screen and refresh it. And we can see that I've added the startup message. I can ask it to show me the change. And it will show me that the application file has changed. And I can compare it to see the actual change that's happened. Now I have an infinite history of such changes. And that is extremely useful when you try to figure out what happened with your code. The next thing I want to talk about is using branches. A lot of time when you're developing, you have one consecutive tree of changes. You're the path of your main code. And uh, that is a challenge in many cases, because sometimes you have a stable version that is deployed to your users, and then you want to work on something and work on some development. But you also want to keep a stable version so that you can always release to your customers. And to do it with previous version control tools or previous strategies was extremely difficult and added us to the point that until we finish all the changes that we want, we cannot release our code. But Git introduced a great concept called branches. And in the branches, I can create branches for development things that I'm doing. When I'm developing it, I'll be able to have separate version of my code, one for my release, usually called master, and one for the feature that I'm developing. So I'm going to right click on master, and I will say new local branch from here. And I'll say here, improve startup message. That is what we call a feature branch. OK, so now I have a feature branch with improved startup method and the master branch with the code I'm actually deployed in production. Let's make some changes to the improved startup method. Let's add a few more messages. Great. So now in my improved startup method, I can run it. And I can see all the messages that I've added here. I'll commit these changes. Started work on the improved startup message. Great. And now it is committed. So now I have my feature branch called improved startup message with the improved startup message. And then I have my master branch, which is the previous release, which is clear. I can always go back to here and fix a bug for a customer and release it. And they live completely separately, these two branches, until I decide to finally merge them. Let's make this more interesting. Let's add a few more branches for separate developers. Let's add a branch for Noam Dev. Noam Dev. We can see that it's based on the improved startup method. It branches out from that branch. And let's add another one. We'll call it Steve Dev. That is also a branch out of the improved startup method. Now let's start making some changes. Steve will make a change over here. 
and we make a change over here. Okay, we'll run it, see that it works. Great, and we'll commit these changes. So now we have four branches. We have the master branch with the original message. We have the dev improved startup message, which has only the initial versions of the new messages. And then we have Steve dev that has the changes that were done by Steve. And if we switch over to Noam dev, we'll have the changes that were done by Noam, which are none at this point. So let's make some changes on behalf of Noam. And say so here also, Noam changed also changed by Noam. Okay, so we can see here that Noam changed message 5 and 3. We can commit this. Great. So now we have four different versions of our code. We have the master branch with nothing in it. We have the improved startup message with the initial state of the messages. We have Steve's branch with message 1 and 3 change, and we'll have Noam changes with message 3 and 5 change. Let's go ahead and merge it all together to the uh, development of the uh, startup message branch, the improved startup message branch. So I'll switch over to improve startup message and I'll go to manage branches and I'll choose merge. I would like to merge Steve's changes to the main improved startup message development branch. So I'm going to say merge from Steve to improve startup message and I'll click merge. So now improve startup message has also message one and three. And to recap, master has the initial message and improve startup message and Steve Brev have exactly the same startup message. Let's run this and see that it runs. Perfect. Now let's have a look at the history of our branch. We can see here that the changes that were done by Steve were added sequentially to this history because they were done on this version. The changes that done by Steve were done on the versions that look like this. Great. Next, let's go ahead and merge norm changes into this branch. So I'm going to say merge from, and I'm going to choose norm dev. And we get a conflict message, which is quite quick because Visual Studio indicates to me and the Git indicate to me that I have made some changes that it was not able to resolve on its own. Let's click on the conflict link here and see those changes. I'll click on the application file where the conflict exists and I will click on the merge button. Now here, Visual Studio will show me an, an overview of the problem that it's having. We can see that from Norm's version, line 5 is great, and it colors it in green, and it includes it with a checkbox. And we can see that from a, the improved startup message branch, line 1 is great, and it's included. And we can see here at the bottom the merged version, the one that will be the result of everything. So 1 and 5 are great, and message 3 has a conflict in it. And in the case of a conflict, I can choose one version, or I can choose the other version, or I can choose the both, and that will happen one after the other. This is how you resolve a conflict in Visual Studio. And I can also make changes. I can say, okay, well, let's take Noam's change and say here, changes done by Noam and Steve and create an even improved version of the change. I will then click Accept Merge and Commit Merge. And I will say here, merged Noam's changes to the branch. And I will commit it. So now the dev version has the merged changes that have happened, the merged code. And when I run it, I will get the merged version of the changes. Great. And if we'll review the history of this branch, we'll go to manage branches and click on view history. We will see the order of commits that have happened here. Okay. The changes that were done on Steve were done on this version, based on this version. The changes that were done by Noam also happened to this version, 
and both were merged in this merge operation that we have done. So this is how you manage multiple branches and multiple developers by the tool doing most of the heavy lifting. It manages the different branches, it understands the changes between them, and it's able to merge them. And just like we applied it here to branches, you will probably apply it in real life to multiple developers doing the same work. Now at this point, we only have two separate versions. We have the master version with the initial message, and we have the improved startup message branch with the improved message. So I'll take it all and merge it back to master, so I'll be able to release it to my customers. I'll merge from improved startup merge, click OK, and voila, my master branch has all the changes that I've done. This is extremely useful when you are developing, because you can develop any feature in a separate branch, and that way always have a stable main version that you can release, and only commit those changes back to the stable version once it's finished and fixed and completed and stable. Okay, you no longer need to work about development that is in the middle and, and not yet completed, slipping down to your release code. This level of separation allows you to manage it well, and also, of course, control multi-user development scenarios where every developer is working on its own code and later merging it all together to the main branch. I hope you find this video useful, and leave your comments in the commentary if you have any ideas or questions about it. Thanks.